What's up guys? We're here to answer one extremely important and mildly, mildly selfish question that I feel everybody wants to know. Are rowers really the most well-rounded athletes in the world? Now, I know what you're saying. You're super biased in this discussion. Yes, I am. I'm not denying that. However, I feel like we should talk about it one way or the other. And there's a really interesting video that just came out the other day studying a famous Olympic rower who absolutely crushed it on the scales, but I don't want to give the answer away too soon. So I feel like, I don't know, I just feel like we need to get into more of like a, a sciencey business type environment to have this discussion. So let's get inside and check it out. So the athlete that we're talking about is Demir Martin. In the last Olympics, took silver in the men's single, and he lost by five thousandths, thousandths of a second. That is the closest racing finish in history in the Olympics for rowing. You have got to see this picture. It's unbelievable as to how close he was to taking the gold. So they put Demir through a battery of five tests, and these tests are Tests that they've put a multitude of athletes across different sports and for various purposes to really assess what is the caliber of each athlete and for their specific sport. What are the things that are important in their sport versus not important and how do they then stack up against all of these other sports? Now those five tests were a dynamometer, which is essentially testing just pure raw torque. Next, you've got body fat. We all understand that one. Then they had an enviro test, which is a fancy way of saying altitude chamber. A spiro test, which is lung capacity. How much air is an, an athlete able to exhale in a single breath? And then they tested VO2 max, the classic lactate threshold test that, that you always hear about, read about, see in, in any fitness, publication anywhere, they're always testing VO2 max. And so of course they tested VO2 max. But let's take a look at what the real results of this were because this is where it gets so interesting. Let's just start with body fat. We all understand body fat. Now, he was off season because this was post Olympics when they tested him. He came in at 18.4% body fat for off season training. Now compare that to, or what they compared that to is an Olympic swimmer who comes in at about 12.4%, but you compare that to a heavyweight Olympic weightlifting athlete, and they come in at a smooth 26.7% body fat. Now the reason that's interesting is because he falls in the mid range for athletes as far as body fat goes. Why is that interesting? Well, because this is a power endurance sport. So his body fat levels, although an endurance based sport are still relatively high compared to the type of work that he is having to do for rowing. So it's an interesting sweet spot between an Olympic weightlifter and a swimmer, which is interesting point number one. Just that's, put that aside, that's interesting point number one. Interesting point number two was the dynamometer test. Now the dynamometer test, maybe you've seen it before, it's like a dude strapped in to a machine. It's like a chest harness, he's holding on, and it's, it often is used for like elbow flexion and extension or knee flexion and extension. And in Demir's case, they did knee flexion and extension, which is testing peak torque of the quad and the hamstring, as well as the ability to test the asymmetry between left and right leg. So they tested both. Now, what Demir scored at was 400, I believe it's Newton meters. Newt, Google, can we Google that one? Newton meter, I'm gonna, Newton meters. All right, my phone's not working. Let's just assume it's Newton meters, but 400 Newton meters. Now, that means Zero. Like that means nothing to me, probably means nothing to you. But when we stack that, that peak torque, it beats out NFL players, elite NFL players, not just like your bench warmers, elite NFL players and basketball players for peak torque. The other super interesting fact is his legs are incredibly symmetrical in like the tune of the only variance was he was at 103.5% different, like 3.5% difference. That's remarkably symmetrical between legs. Most people 
probably not me, are symmetrical, not symmetrical between legs. You probably aren't either, but because of the demands of sculling or being in a boat, right, and having two oars in your hands, your legs have to be giving equally so that you go straight down the course. Because if one goes harder, you end up doing like this thing off the course, guaranteed. <laughs> that in and of itself, also very interesting. Peak torque above a pro NFL player that's huge. So let's put that point number two interesting over here. Point number three, VO2 max. We all love VO2 max. It's everywhere. Everyone talks about it. It's a performance point. Where he really killed it was at 6.25 liters of O2 per minute. Now, what does this stack up against? It put him well above elite marathon runners in his VO2 max. Elite marathon runners, if you didn't know this, are exceptional in that category because they live at these mind-boggling paces that if you just asked me to do it once, I couldn't hit. And he is living well above an elite marathoner when it comes to VO2 max. So interesting point number three, let's set it over there. Point number four, not that interesting. The Enviro, they tested him at altitude with a minute 30 on, a minute 30 off, 30 on, eight rounds, basically tested his capacity, heart rate, as it, as sea level increased up to 2,000 meters above sea level. The findings, as far as this video reported, not really that interesting. So, we'll put that one over here. But where I was really interested to see, and this is yet another strong point for rowers, again, Biased? Eh, maybe. Probably. Yes. Yes, I'm biased. But all of this reinforces my biases. Therefore, I am probably right because of this. Anyways, the Spiro test is a lung function test. It's like where you, you exhale and you're pushing out as much air as possible and, and what it's testing is lung size or, or lung basically how much air you can displace at any given time and Demir was putting out 6.4 6.4 liters per breath which is above Olympic swimmers swimmers that is unbelievable these swimmers in my opinion are some of the most amazing athletes in the world and swimmers actually make fantastic rowers. Swimmers, if you're thinking about switching sports, rowing, we got you covered. Got a seat for you right here. They have incredible capacity. Their lungs display so much air and the, the control of breathing. It's something I've never figured out when it comes to rowing or swimming, I should say. But he was putting out more liters per breath in exhale than swimmers do. The man has lungs of steel. Now, he's a huge human being as well, so let's not forget that component. But sometimes those tall guys, like that doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna have increased capacity because it means it's more human to move over space and time, which can be a detriment. And that's one of the things that, that rowers can tend to struggle with is like putting on strength and being strong because they're so long and wiry. We have these long gangly limbs that just don't make for very effective like strength drivers or torque drivers, which I bring back to the dynamometer test on Demir was particularly interesting. So let's pull all these four interesting points. We'll leave that fifth non-interesting one over there. Four interesting points, strong dynamometer test, fantastic VO2 max, body fat, in between a, an Olympic weightlifting athlete and a swimmer, so he falls in the mid-range, particularly interesting to me, and the Spiro test, all those things, if we stack those up for what it actually means to be a rounded athlete, I think it makes a fairly strong argument, I'm not saying this is definitive, but it makes a pretty strong argument for rowers having the ability to be very well-rounded when it comes to athletic pursuits, which is one of the reasons why rowing is such a great sport. And, and I don't necessarily mean rowing rowing, but indoor rowing can be just as effective as a, as a longevity sport because of the value of what you are working on when you are on this machine. It requires leg strength. It requires lung capacity. It, it requires the displacement of air. It also helps to keep strength as well as aerobic capacity so that you don't necessarily see these diminishing returns on the strength side or the capacity side. It tends to build both really well. So is rowing the most well-rounded 
and useful sport in the world. I don't know. I'm going to leave that up to you guys. But I do think that this makes a very valid argument for rowing being an extremely useful form of fitness. If you had to choose one tool, I'd say that this is a pretty good bet for you to make sure that you're getting everything that you need out of your fitness. But at the end of the day, do I have to declare that one is better than the other? Nah, I think there are a lot of great forms of fitness. So you decide, but let the facts settle for a little bit. As always guys, thanks for hanging out. I'm Shane Farmer, this is Dark Horse Rowing. I really appreciate you hanging out. I love all of you. If you love this video, make sure you hit subscribe, punch that button over there. And if you really liked it, hit that little bell so that you get notified whenever we put out new videos. But as always guys, thanks for hanging out. We will see you on the other side. Ha!